I wanted to start off uh, for uh, folks that are, haven't been following along for the last couple months with a little bit of a background of the Make It Real 3D Printing Challenge that Polyspectra put together with our friends at Weevolver. So I hope you'll you know, be patient uh, while I just quickly go through uh, the context for this for folks who are unaware. Uh, but our founding mission at Polyspectra is to create engineering grade additive materials that help designers, inventors, and engineers make their ideas real. And that is really at the core of everything that we do, including this competition, which is all about making uh, our contestants ideas real. So uh, super quick background uh, around the, the products, cyclic olefin resin, which uh, we uh, abbreviate as core, C-O-R, um, and, and like the way in which we're making these ideas real with rugged polymers uh, that feature high toughness, high ductility, very high working temperatures, high chemical resistance, uh, weatherability, biocompatibility, uh, and uh, these have uh, the ability to directly print and use parts uh, with properties that can uh, surpass most additive polymers out there and, and in many cases rival engineering grade uh, thermoplastics and thermosets uh, that you would typically need to injection mold. So here's an example of uh, functional uh, parts, including a Venturi valve and a, and a pinch valve for a uh, COVID-19 ventilator that we did for RespiraWorks. As an example, you can see the classic up and to the right chart of toughness and he heat resistance. It's very challenging to do both of these at the same time. And this has been the problem that we've been working on as a company for about five years now. Uh, and for those uh, finalists, I think everyone will remember from our, our intro webinar, why did we do this in the form of a competition? Uh, why now? And uh, we were really excited about the technology that we have. We want to share that with the world. We want to help people make their ideas real, help inventors and engineers, designers uh, realize their vision, their dreams. Um, and Unfortunately, the vast majority of the really cool things that we have worked on, uh, we're not allowed to talk about. <laughs> so, uh, you know, most of our partnerships, most of our customers are very sensitive with uh, intellectual property. All, all of the fun stuff that we've done is tucked away neatly under non-disclosure agreements. Uh, and so we really wanted to uh, structure this competition as a way to not only you know, directly help uh, people that uh, we, you know, might not normally have the budget to to work with us directly, uh, but to also be able to share stories about, uh, about you know, uh, making ideas real. And the Weevolver community was really perfect for this because of the kind of deep history in uh, open hardware uh, that they have. And so they were really perfect, perfect partners for us. Uh, on this mission to, to run this competition. And we're super grateful for everybody at Weevolver. So this is really the question that we asked, what will you invent with Core Alpha? Um, and I guess I'll say, you know, since now it's, it's too late to, <laughs> to join the competition and here we are minutes away from announcing the winner. Uh, I guess I would say, you know, for folks that are, are just seeing this, just tuning in, uh, we we'd, uh, wanna ask you the same question. What will you invent with Core Alpha? And we'd love to, to um, get um, your designs, see if there's a way that we could help you. And the best way to send us that is to request a quote at polyspectra.com slash parts. That is the direct link to um, uploading a design for us to, to help you. OK, so a little bit of structure around how we, um, how we structure the challenge, just so that there's context for everybody watching both live and, and in the replay. So this is gonna be recorded uh, as well. I just wanna make sure uh, that we're clear on how we structured this. So we announced uh, in, in August, uh, we had a deadline in September. Uh, we announced the finalists in October and today, December 1st, we are going to announce the winners. 
And uh, there's going to uh, be one grand prize winner of uh, the $25,000 uh, grand prize uh, in Polyspectra Services, where we are uh, actively working with our team of expert engineers to make the winner's idea real. Uh, and I, I'll also reveal that we had we had such a hard time deciding and we had so much fun working with all of the different finalists um, where we've been printing their parts, uh, iterating on the design, getting feedback from them on these uh, functional prototypes uh, and thinking about how we might scale uh, their specific idea to production additive manufacturing uh, that we're actually also going to go above and beyond what we said at the beginning, we're gonna have uh, some some runners up. I think that's the best way to make it plural. Runners ups, runner ups. You guys tell me. Okay. <laughs> so uh, very briefly, uh, the judging criteria and requirements. So number one, uh, and, and I guess I'll preface this by saying all of the finalists that we're going to highlight today uh, met these and we're super proud of them. So uh, one, successful designs that will meet the submission requirements is the design real? Can it work and actually create a functional product? Can it be created with additive manufacturing? Uh, does that design push the boundaries of additive manufacturing? It's not just can you print it, but uh, does it? Is it interesting? Is it hard? Is it uh, either impossible to do in other ways, uh, or at, at least very challenging, right? Um, and then does it utilize these specific properties of of core alpha? And we will. Uh, not necessarily dive into how every single finalist um, idea uh, represents core alpha, but for, for the runners up and the winner, we're going to really, really dig into that. Um, and so it wasn't just, is it possible to print? Uh, we had a lot of great ideas, for example, of people suggesting things that, you know, you could really only do in metal um, or you could really only do with something that had very different properties. Um, so it was also about the, the fit for, you know, for our product and making sure that it, there's a way that we can help. Okay, so first, I again, I'm super proud of all of the finalists that we have. And I wanted to spend some time uh, just briefly introducing all of them and celebrating uh, them because everybody who made it to the finalist round, uh, has done some really impressive work. They've been super fun to work with. And I guess I also want to say that to all the finalists uh, that you know we're super excited to continue working together, uh, even if even if you aren't the winner, uh, we want to find ways to to kind of keep it up and see if there are good a good path forward to, to help you. So we uh, and then the other thing I'll say is we're not going to go into super detail around the finalists kind of specific design or idea we really want to one focus on celebrating them as as individuals as inventors as engineers as designers and two we want to kind of respect you know their ideas so we do plan to um you know share more stories in the future uh with some of the finalists that uh specifically want to want to do that and that's a win for both of them but for here on the webinar today, we just want to celebrate uh, the individuals. So I uh, these are in no particular order. Uh, so don't read too much into the finalist order. But we have 11 finalists that I want to highlight. And maybe you can help me by putting exclamation points and emojis in the chat uh, for, for each and every one of these. So uh, the first thing I like to highlight is, is red ventilators. Uh, and their mission is to design the world's most capable, reliable, low-cost ventilator technology to be freely licensed to low-income countries. So, whoo, red ventilators, blowing up the chat, all kinds of emojis. All right, second finalist, Team Rapiz. So, uh, Yvonne Cagle and her team, uh, Team Rapiz, is designing a buckle component, that's the, the printed part, for a wearable wrap technology that is accelerating the very edge of human restoration by turning weeks of soft tissue injury and deconditioning into days uh, uh, from days of discomfort into minutes. Uh, and so Yvonne's team has is using the ingenuity of 3D printing uh, 
to meet the resiliency of the ancient pyramids uh, and ingeniously blend to render uh, what they call the Rappi's approach, an orchestration in healing for humanity. I definitely want to say, Yvonne, I super appreciate the creativity um, in, in the description here. It's like uh, a joy <laughs> to read and been so much fun to work with you and your team. For those that don't know, Yvonne is a, is a certified NASA astronaut. Uh, and so her idea comes from her experience there. And it's been very fun to work with the, the Rappi's team. Okay, up next we have sun geometry. So I guess this one is also planetary. And although the, the, the solar electricity generation system will be on earth, uh, but using uh, the sun's power. So there, this is a really cool idea where their, um, their system uh, that we're printing it, you know, we printed a bunch of the different sub assemblies for them. And the goal is to make a smart solar tracking robot that will integrate high efficiency solar cells with uh, concentrators and a two axis sun tracker. So this was a really fun, uh, really fun project to work on. And for me personally, I, I did a lot of research on, on photovoltaics when I was a graduate student and have uh, been away from that world for a while. So this was a lot of fun to, to get back into the, the renewable energy game. So everybody, let's blow up the chat for sun geometry. Congratulations. Okay. Next up, we have the N plus bike shoe platform and we're featuring uh, marks uh, in the image here. So this is the first world's first additive enabled performance bike shoe. It is fully modular, modular repairable and customized uh, with a 3D printer and a sewing machine. And this is an open source hardware project uh, that is exploring the potential of digital manufacturing and changing expectations of product ownership. So way to go N plus bike shoe platform. This was also a really, really cool one uh, that you can imagine if it's gonna go on your shoe and then clip in to a bike, you really need things to be quite durable. So congratulations N plus. Okay, speaking of speed and durability and sports, uh, Simon Tirapel from uh, Italy, he has created a pulley, uh, which he designed to use in, in sailing boats. And he uh, has this bigger vision of being able to additively manufacture all the different parts of the boat. Uh, unfortunately, our printers aren't quite <laughs> big enough to help him with the full boat hole, uh, but we've been working together uh, with him on the pulley and that has been a lot of fun. So congratulations, Simon, everybody give him some, some smiley faces over there. Uh, next up, we have Trillium Technologies and specifically their entry, they're calling the Fuel Pod. And the Fuel Pod project aims to improve NASA's foam linear design on future lithium ion battery packs for space applications, particularly NASA's Artemis mission to the moon. And by doing this, they are adding enhanced specifications to this component to make it more suited for deep space. And the design optimizes a combination of multiple components. So basically in the printed part, the printed part is displacing many uh, other uh, traditionally manufactured components. And that has a number of benefits to the strength, the impact resistance, uh, manufacturing and, and maintenance. So this has been a super futuristic one uh, to work on with, with Trillium and, and is a really, really interesting uh, application. So yay for Trillium, woo. Okay, Evil Components, uh, we got featuring Heath uh, over here. Evil Components designs motorbike parts truly evolved for their function through utilizing 3D printing and biological forms. The vertebrae indicator bracket offers a new level of efficiency and high performance. So everybody in the chat, celebrate. Here we go. Okay, Ben Choi. Uh, ben, uh, very inspiring. He has designed a low cost prosthetic arm that is controlled by a combination of brain waves and subtle head gestures. Uh, and we would definitely need to share 
the video link uh, to him doing this in real time. I didn't remember to put it in the slides as a video, but it is really cool. And except for a few electronic components, the arm is entirely 3D printed and the current model is capable of moving four different joints. So it has a dual axis elbow, uh, wrist and hand and performing a variety of complex tasks such as transferring objects between containers and pouring a glass of water. So way to go, Ben. It has been super fun to work with you uh, on this prosthetic arm. Okay, we have uh, Dr. Zulti and Kovalik that have uh, been partnering with Dive Design uh, to create an assistive device for performing ovariohysterectomies. I think I said that right, which is basically spaying animals. Uh, and this device would improve the vet's speed, accuracy, and comfort during the procedure. So uh, this is a, a medical device of, of sorts, a, a medical tool uh, that has been, uh, we've been working on and kind of thinking about taking advantage of, of some of the uh, biological properties, which I didn't mention earlier, in terms of being able to sterilize core alpha um, and print parts that, that are safe uh, for use in, in medical applications. We have Arch Ventures. Everybody give it up in the chat room for Arch Ventures. So Arch Ventures uh, has a lot going on. They have a lot of really cool ideas coming down the pipeline. Uh, and the Glacial is uh, the one that we were specifically working on uh, through uh, this, this competition. And it is the world's first digital ice drink, sorry, digital ice drinking glass. Uh, simply pair it with any wireless charging device, pour it in your favorite warm beverage, and then enjoy a crisp thirst quenching drink without any dilution. When you're done, you can remove the cooling lattice. So this is the uh, part that's very important to 3D print from the base of the glass and toss them both in the dishwasher. Way to go, Arch Ventures. And last but not least, we have Kianush who has designed an interactive algorithm for generating frames for personalized and customized 3D printed glasses. Uh, and uh, at least my understanding of this is that this entire thing, uh, algorithm was developed himself. So he he's not using traditional CAD software. He actually wrote a script that can generate, you know, hundreds or thousands of permutations of these customized glasses. Uh, so the, the software side of this was was really quite complex. So so congratulations, Kinoosh, uh, for making it to the, the final round of the Make It Real 3D printing challenge. Okay, so we're uh, almost at the moment of truth uh, and we're going to move into announcing the runners up first uh, and then the winner. So the suspense I'm sure is killing you. Don't wanna waste any more time. Just wanna encourage everyone to think about this question. What will you invent with Core Alpha? Okay. The runner's up. So first I wanna clarify, uh, again, I think I mentioned this in the beginning, but we we're so impressed with all the finalists. Uh, it, each one of them is just, uh, I mean, each idea is really cool. The individuals, the teams are, have been really uh, a great joy to work with. Uh, and as I mentioned, we, we decided that we we're gonna add this runner's up category um, to uh, to the challenge uh, because it was it was quite tough for us to to make this decision, and so what we we decided on is the runners up are going to receive uh, five thousand dollars in Polyspectra services. So you know all of the finalists we've been printing parts for them, doing um, testing, doing design for manufacturing, and iterating on their design. Uh, and with the runners up, we're going to uh, take that even further, um, do more qualification and testing for them, do more production uh, parts fabrication. Uh, so without further ado, drum roll, please. So we have the first runner up that we're going to announce for the Make It Real 3D Printing Challenge 
I'm calling this runner up the make it move because this one was certainly the most uh, dynamic in terms of moving, moving parts. Uh, and I will also say uh, it also required us to move at a very uh, uh, swift pace because of the sheer number of components that we had to print. So uh, the, the 2020 runner up for Make It Move is Ben Choi. So everybody, let's give it up for Ben Choi in the chat room. I'll do a little dance for him to make sure that the YouTube video replay gets a lot of likes, me doing silly stuff. Way to go, Ben. Super inspiring to work with you. Uh, we, we will be in touch um, you know, after this uh, with you to, uh, to work together. So what we're gonna do with Ben is we're gonna make uh, every single one of these joints out of Core Alpha. And you know, I mentioned before, he's already shown with traditional materials that he can pick up a glass of water. And one of the challenges for Ben is you know, the, the traditional materials he uh, was printing these out of are, aren't really strong enough to, to do more uh, rugged activities, let's say. And so, uh, I don't know, my personal goal, and maybe this is impractical, we'll have to consult with Ben on this. I didn't, I didn't get his permission to, uh, to say this, but I think it'd be really cool to see if we get this throw a baseball. Uh, I mean, that, that, that would be uh, pretty rugged for prosthetic arms. So uh, way to go, Ben, congratulations. Super inspiring. And uh, we're gonna, we're gonna uh, follow up and have a extremely rugged core alpha uh, prosthetic arm that is powered by Ben's brain. Okay, so the second runner up who's also going to win $5,000 in Polyspectra Parts Printing Services. We're calling Make It Fly. This one is quite literally uh, going out of this world. Congratulations to Trillium uh, for their fuel pod design uh, for the NASA Lunar Artemis mission. So congratulations, Trillium. Woo! Okay, it's weird to dance by myself and celebrate. I have no idea. I don't even know if they're in the chat, <laughs> but this is amazing. Um, yeah, way to go, Trillium. So one of the things that that th I really want to highlight about the Trillium design, um, and again, I think we're not quite ready with them to share um, the actual uh, design because we're still we're still working through some of the details. But as you can imagine. Uh, the requirements to go to space and to actually uh, safely provide uh, the insulation and chemical resistance and impact resistance for you know space grade battery pack. Uh, the, that list of requirements is quite long, and one of the things that I uh, is really you know been fun to work with Trillium on, and that really resonates with a lot of the work. You know that we've been doing over the last five years at Polyspectra is, uh, you know, we have actually done cryogenic testing. We've done proton bombardment testing. We've we've tested to see what will happen to our materials when they get soaked with jet fuel, and will the properties degrade? And so, with the Trillium um, fuel pod, uh, this is actually a really perfect application where you know this is mission critical this has to be super rugged and this has to survive you know high temperatures um, help you know mitigate any damage if one of the batteries does you know explode or light on um, fire uh, it needs to be lightweight needs to be chemically resistant it's got to survive the van allen belt uh, <laughs> so this has been a really fun one um, and for us, because, you know, we, you know, we've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars doing this um, aerospace um, testing uh, and with the, with the fuel pod, we will uh, be able to put that to good use. So we're going to help them um, with their uh, NASA proposal uh, and get this thing real. That's maybe not a sentence. We're going to make it real. Congratulations, Trillium 
for uh, making it fly out of orbit. Okay, so this is the great moment of suspense. I've been waiting. I don't, I've been waiting for years, really, for this moment. Uh, I, maybe what I didn't reveal is that uh, we've been chatting with Revolver about this idea for for a long time now, and and 2020 was finally finally the year to make it real. So we've you know been planning this for most of the year, and then uh, actually running it for the better part of the the second half of of the year. And so I am really excited to announce the winner here. And this has been just so much fun for us. It really makes coming to work every day a, a lot of a lot of fun and a real joy. So this, I have to just like slow it down or something and make super duper suspenseful. <laughs> the winner of the $25,000 grand prize for the Polyspectra and Revolver Make It Real 3D Printing Challenge is, oh, what did I do? Is, oh, I forgot. Why is this the winner? What's, what is it? It's the Make It Real, but it's the Make It Rumble. This is the, the, the truest thing that I can say about this project is, boy, this thing is going to rumble. Congratulations, Evil Components, uh, Heath Townsend of Evil Components. Uh, this is amazing. Let's all give it up uh, for Heath. I'll do a dance for him. Everybody in the chat room can go crazy. Okay, so we have a super secret surprise and we're gonna see if I can get this to work. So I'm gonna quickly show you guys some of the awesome pictures of Heath's parts as I attempt to invite Heath himself here on to InventFM to tell us about his amazing invention. So let's see if we got him. Heath, are you there? I think you're muted. <laughs> Hey, how you doing? <laughs> awesome! Congratulations. Honestly, I'm I'm lost for words, mate. It's uh, yeah, it's incredible. Uh, yeah, I, I can't get over it. Yeah, I just want to say yeah, thank you to you, Raymond, and uh, and Mandy especially, and your team. Um, I know I've been pestering Mandy a lot and said to her, you know, work <laughs> too. So she's been very busy. Um, but yeah, and congratulations to all the other finalists. Like I'm blown away by the applications and the uses of core alpha like it's incredible um yeah really impressed but oh it, yeah I, yeah i can't get over it <laughs> yeah, awesome. thank you <laughs> yeah thank you so much so i have uh well i have a cu couple more pictures let's get rid of the slides because i think now it's time it's time to chat and um really dig into to what heath's rumble ready uh invention is so let me stop the screen share and let's just go <laughs> face to face so keith um my first question to you uh what is it <laughs> yeah good good question um yeah basically this is a um uh an indicator bracket um designed for a motorbike um it clamps around the uh the forks um and i started with basically the best it's the kellerman atto indicator which is the smallest in the world um, and one of the brightest um, which is a big thing in terms of the custom community you know you want very minimal um, design so I thought okay this is a really good you know um, this could be a really good application for creating some sort of some part um, that's been made through shaped optimization and gentrified design and um, really it's, I'm trying to sort of tease and you know push um, again what 3d printing is capable of um, in terms of efficiency with it. So yeah, and um, ends up with this design that's um, all organic and things, very easy to use, very lightweight, thanks to Core Alpha. So yeah, that's the, um, yeah, that's the description of it, I'd say. <laughs> okay, awesome. So I've got on my end, my team gave me some of uh, the different variations on the design uh, that we went through, but uh, you then kind of integrated it into the final 
the final thing. So can you can you show us the real thing and how you went, you know, what what all of the components are and, and how it works? Uh, yeah, basically. So it's uh, it has a clamping mechanism. So it kind of um, just pops in. So you get mm -hmm. the two it pops into place as a kind of. So I, got the, I got the pop. I'll do the pop for people so you don't have to unpop yours. Cool. Oh, satisfying little snap there <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, so yeah which i just thought is a great use um this sort of ball and socket joint um again going back to biomimicry and um, it's quite a nice way to you know use 3d printing um but yeah and obviously it's got um the whole process of this shaped optimization and um, you can see the sort of um all the areas where it's removed material again just making it more and more efficient um there's also uh, these sort of um uh, a cable management system so it holds where it guides the route because that's another thing i've noticed where you have these designers who make bike parts um and you know it's just say plasma cut or something and you know they, they design it in a week and manufacture it and that's it and but people who are into the custom motorbike scene they love their bikes and they're looking at every aspect of it they want they want someone who cares just as much um you know at the design end um, so though so this little cable management system is actually, I don't think I've told you this. Um, oh, this is news to me. Yeah, that I is I thought a, they were just cool spinal <laughs> nubs. No, no. That is they're a, functional. Yeah, that's a 3D scan of um, a pelvis. <laughs> so um, <laughs> which is sort of shrunk down and, and put in there, um, which I love. It's a great little feature. Um, yeah, and the, the other big thing to this is obviously um, the, I've had these parts machined. Um, this is this little black piece here is the um, Kellerman indicator bracket. You can just you can see how ridiculously small that is. Yeah, you know, it's smaller than my fingernails. Um, but yeah, these these machine parts um, they're, they're fantastic. Again, with Core Alpha, what we've been able to do is um, just heat them up, you know, with like a soldering iron and, and and push them in. So push they're seat yeah, exactly, and it just okay. works. Work what do you what do you call that? Like a heat heat sink fit or what I, I forget the what's the term for that do you remember i don't know heat inserted so yeah heat <laughs> insert yeah, yeah yeah cool awesome well that's amazing so that's a really fun application we you know we've been playing around a little bit but uh i i think this has been one of the most fun parts of the the challenge for us is you know okay it's not enough to just do the printing part how do you integrate it with the rest of the hardware and uh to have that heated insert uh, and integrate, you know, the core alpha part with the metal components was was a really cool part of this project. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's been a really good feature and um, yeah, it's been quite fun. So um, yeah, and plus it, it'll be so strong and sturdy. So yeah, I'm really awesome. pleased with that. But, cool. Um, yeah. So, hey, can you tell us a little bit more about, you know, so obviously this like biomimicry is a big inspiration for you in terms of thinking about this spinal designs and scanning pelvises and <laughs> figuring that out. Um, and obviously there's like a light weighting and generative aspect, but I think it would just be helpful for, for, for the audience here to, if you'd be able to maybe walk through like um, mm -hmm. the, the process and like, how did this go from, you know, an idea to a digital design to, you know, a prototype and, you know, ultimately now uh, we're talking about, you know, uh, production additive manufacturing of of a product that you're going to sell right yeah, yeah, so yeah. so could you just walk us through some of those steps and obviously you don't need to give away your your secret sauce but but just so that so that everyone can understand uh yeah. how you got here yeah yeah so obviously for me as a designer the um the, you know when i was introduced to 3d printing and um, to me it's it's the fact that you know complexity is free uh, i think it's um of the Reichentel, um, the CEO of three systems, who says that. Uh -huh. And you've got to understand how much of a feature that is, that you know, you've got these other manufacturing methods um, and they can't, you can't produce um, these parts um, with those. Um, so again, that's, that's always there in the, you know, the back of your mind that, okay, there's, you know, the, there's complete freedom, which is just incredible. Um, but yeah, I've got to talk about obviously the link to biomimicry and how that works with CAD. So there's a process known as shaped optimization. Um, and that was my first sort of um, introduction into organic design. 
So if you imagine, I love CAD, by the way, as in I'd, I'd love it in terms of what you can do. I'm a bit of a nerd like that. But yeah, so you imagine you're designing a motorbike part or any part, really. And you design, you know, the original part, then you simulate the forces that the part would undergo when in use. So then what the software does, and this is what's incredible, how, how you know, uh, um, far software has come these days, how powerful it is, is that um, it will then work out and simulate, okay, I don't need material in this area, I can take it away from here, I need to keep it here. You know, you set, okay, you know, for example, the mounting points, you need to preserve that. And then it will just strip it back and back. Um, which again, it, it's amazing to see. And this, this is where I often sound like a sort of serial killer. Um, and I've said this to you before, but um, basically the, the results that this, uh, these simulations sort of kick out, they often look really organic and kind of like um, skeletons and skeletal structures. Um, so I've been recently getting really interested in the natural world and bones and things. It gets a bit morbid, but when you think about it, it's, it's the same thing. Like your body has evolved, um, you know, with your own structure to find the most efficient form it can. Um, and then suddenly you've got this digital method that it's giving similar results. So there's a clear overlap there. And that just blows my mind. Like, I, I love that. Um, yeah. Taking that further, then you get generative design, which is a whole other beast. Like this stuff, this stuff is so good. It scares me in terms of what the future of design will be. Like, yeah. okay. so you think of a, um, you think of a, like a team working on a part. Okay. They might spend weeks. I mean, typically in motorbike parts, they don't. I know they spend days really, depends on the, the product instead of so shaped optimization is obviously you've got like a maximum volume and it's taking away and stripping it back where it needs generative design takes it a step further where instead of designing the initial part you just say right i need it to clamp here i need it to clamp here avoid this area there's something here that i don't want you know the part to you know go into this uh, this volume um, you put the forces in, you tell it the material, and then you hit generate. And then what it will do is it will give you iteration after iteration after iteration. And it's literally, so it literally evolves. It's trying to shrink and refine it further and further until it finds an outcome that like, oh, they all suit it, but it's just how much can you push that, that level? So it's a really, it's a really interesting time for like, even like intellectual property, like how does that work? Because I've just, I've set almost like parameters yeah. um, and told it, you know, work, you know, you know, work on these simulations and see what it um, kicks out. Um, but then it, it's even further than that because you've got all these iterations, like from one study, you know, 40 or something, but it can do, it can do hundreds. And I can't imagine how a team of people would be able to compete with that. Like it's, um, it's, it's amazing, you know, <laughs> like, but at the same time, you do have to say though, it's only as good as the inputs you give it, you know, it's only as good as the forces, you know, that you put in it, right. you know, so you, you do have to be that, careful. That's the human part and the creative part is like designing that system, not drawing every single triangle on the mesh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But no, I, I truly believe like, when you think of high performance parts with anything like motorbikes or cars or mountain bikes, to me, and if anyone knows anything about engineering, I think of CNC milling, you know, from billet, you're taking material away and it looks stunning. Um, but the problem is there's so many limitations, you know, the, the massive thing in terms of, you know, if you've got a block of metal and you're machining away from it, you know, it's a, a waste um, process. Uh, of a lot of the time, the big problem is undercuts and things. So again, three printing complexity is free. Um, but um, yeah, it's it's um, it's it's amazing what um, what can be done with um, with this. Like um, I, I don't know. I find like when you think even about the materials that you can you can print in now and where the technology is in terms of titanium. And things it's it's scary where, where we're at like it's amazing like it's yeah it's good, but um yeah it's, it's 
it's incredible. Um, yeah, so when you think of like, um, as I said, high performance parts within, you know, manufacturing, that is what I think of um, in terms of CNC billet, like aluminium. Um, I truly believe the next step will be, we'll be seeing a lot more biological looking forms because it, it's just that that's how it, that's where everything's going. Mm. Like a point now where design software is well ahead of our manufacturing capabilities, like manufacturing is playing catch up. Um, yeah. And again, this is such an exciting time for, you know, working with you and Polyspectra. Um, and I've been waiting a long time for a material like Core Alpha. Like I've been waiting, yeah, a hell of a long time for a, um, a material that it's, that's both strong, but it also has that surface finish level that is ready. And I know we both believe in this, like, yeah. I know we both believe that 3D printing shouldn't just be a prototyping um, stage. It, right. it can be um, ready for final products. Um, and that's what Evil Components is all about. Like, that's what I want to bring to the marketplace. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's so the big thing. Could you just for the, I think you and I know intimately, but just to help other people understand, could you just maybe share a couple more data points on you know, like, why was this impossible to do in other materials? Oh, yeah, that, that's easy in terms of, um, I, don't, I don't know if people have seen that there's a great clip that just summarizes it really well, where you have a test print, and then you've got the competition that are trying to keep up, and you just put them in a blender, and you turn it on, <laughs> and, out, and they're just dust, and yours is there. Like, that's so well you okay know. so the motors the the blend test is a good proxy for the the rumbling on the motorcycle <laughs> yeah exactly like what as soon as i saw that yeah you um i was curious before but that that got me interested <laughs> okay cool so yeah. when the, with the prototypes that you had made kind of before was it they're kind of snapping because they're brittle they can't hold yeah. it they're tough but they can't hold the heat of the bike like what maybe what were some of those critical requirements yeah a big one was the um the brittleness of it like especially with sla printing methods mm -hmm. um they tend to be quite brittle um the other one is you know if you think of if people are new to 3d printing they won't know about fdm printing right. but basically you type in 3d printer it's what people have at home on their desktops and right great fun and don't get me wrong i've got one and you know it's how yeah. i do a lot of prototyping um but it's when you see all those layer lines and contours um which personally i do kind of like and aesthetic um but it's it, it it's it affects how you know you've got how each layer is fused to each other and and it's just it doesn't have that quality of you know you, you see it and you're like this isn't a final product yet it's not there but then you have core alpha um and you know with with that process and it's like yeah this is this is high quality this is like on par with injection molding yeah and one of the but, things um, i'll say is even if you like the properties there um, um one of the things i'll say is even if you like the aesthetic of the layer lines right in an fdm one of the really uh big challenges that we hear about a lot is the the isotropy of the properties right so it might be strong in the plane uh, yeah. of the build head right but then in the you know it's a in fdm you call this like the z strength problem right so in z um it's half that strength yeah. uh, for example and it's and it's one thing to and in some cases um it's a, it's not just anisotropic but it's also path dependent so you'd effectively mm -hmm. have to qualify instead of having an engineering database of allowables for one material on one printer, right? You'd actually need to rebuild the allowables for every shape, which is just not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so we've worked really hard. To, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. So, Hey, I have, um, I have uh, one, uh, well, another question, and I guess I just want to tee it up for, for folks who are here with us live. I do want you to start thinking about questions that you have uh, for Heath uh, about yeah, evil components. Um, we'd be happy to answer them. And I think we've been using the chat for 
for going crazy and raising the roof, but let's use the Q&A. There's a separate Q&A section um, that you should be able to see. So if you would put, start to think about your questions uh, about, um, you know, about Heath's application, I guess we'd also be happy to answer some questions about Coralfa if there are some, but I would really like to focus more on, uh, on evil and, and Heath's plans. Um, but start to put some questions in, in there while, while um, I kind of wrap up a few questions of my own. So um, I guess I want to hear in your words uh, a little bit about, you know, what, what are your plans for, for evil components? Oh yeah, well um, yeah, it's obviously it's really exciting and yeah, especially after today <laughs> you can imagine. Um, yeah, but the plan is um, we're going to be starting we're starting production um, of some parts, uh, the vertebrae indicator bracket. Um, that will be in January. Um, the website will be up uh, evilcomponents.co.uk. Um, check out yeah Instagram. Um, link in bio <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, that's where people can access it. And you can again find you'll be able to find out more information about the entire process there um yeah and I, and i really just want to yeah as i said offer this new um this new level of performance for people with their parts and um, that's how they can access it um there's also I, I told you this the other week actually there's some really exciting news about um some collaborations and commissions that i've been working on with these God level bike builders that are my idols. Um, and it's amazing that they've reached out. Again, they found me through, you know, your article. Um, you know, so we're you'll be seeing some um we recently got a client who wants a generously designed uh, titanium subframe for a Ducat, uh, Ducati. Um wow. you know, which is just a dream project. Um yeah, that's so, amazing. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, it was yeah. Thanks to you, partly, but um, but yeah, you'll you'll be seeing some um, very interesting and different um, projects coming up, sort of one-offs and things. But yeah, the again, and I also want to feature um, a range of parts that people will be able to buy, all in unique sizes, um, all, uh, special, you know, bespoke sizes and things. So yeah, that's that's the plan. <laughs> cool, that's amazing. So actually, this this is a perfect um, segue into one of the questions that we have which I'll start to answer live, which is uh, when will these be available for purchase? <laughs> I think <laughs> we've got some details to work out, but I think we're aiming for early next year, right? Yeah, yeah, that sounds good to me. Yeah, yeah, definitely in January. And uh, yeah, as I said, a range of sizes for different forks. So yeah, early next year. Awesome, yeah, so just, just to maybe uh, reveal a little bit of kind of some of the next steps, that we're going to do and kind of um, what the you know the prize money so to speak is is going towards directly with with evil is um, you know now that it works <laughs> and we've we've got one we're going to really optimize uh, the design and the print process to be you know production and make sure that we can um, meet. Uh, Heath's demands and uh, what's your, what is your word for it? Grown to Heroism. order? Uh, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, I like that. So, so Heath is going to grow. Uh, well, I guess we'll grow them, yeah. <laughs> uh, and and Heath and his team will do some of the rest of the assembly. But um, what's been really exciting to us is, you know, obviously both you know both of us have been. Uh, you know, saying throughout this conversation, yeah, it's been a long time coming. We've been waiting for this, but in terms of actually working together on this project, it's been quite fast that we've been able to, you know, basically say, hey, this thing works, let's start selling it. So yeah. stay yeah. tuned in January, uh, uh, we'll have uh, some some production additive parts uh, for for motorcycles for uh, through Evil Components. So yeah, exactly. awesome. Yeah. Okay, so we had a couple, um, a couple questions. Uh, okay, so Mohan, hi Heath, congratulations. Are there other components on your bike which Core Alpha can be used for, um, or is the bracket the only one? Uh, yeah, um, I was talking to you. This uh, we spoke briefly about this. There's a few speedo brackets that want, want to offer. Um, again, it's, it's perfect material. Basically, you can think of anything on your handlebars. It's, it's, it's uh, suitable. Uh, there's a range of, uh, I've been experimenting with um, helmet uh, peak for the top, um, which I 
think could be really interesting. Um, yeah, I want to play around with that. As I said, it's it's like I've been waiting for this for a long time. So <laughs> you think I have a dozens of designs and just waiting for that right material. So yeah, it, it's a really exciting time. So there's going to be a, a good range of uh, a variety of parts. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, we're super excited to work with you on, on these other ideas as well. Good, awesome. good. Uh, let's see. Um, Charlie, congratulations, Heath. The part looks incredible, all caps. Uh, how long have you been working in the 3D printing scene? And at what point did you begin to focus on generative design? Uh, yeah, thank you, Charlie. <laughs> um, that's kind. Um, yeah, um, well, I was, I'd say I was introduced to 3D printing at college, so about 16. Um, and <laughs> it was a, f a funny time that, um, you know, we had this workshop and there was this great big printer in the corner that the, you know, college had had to get funding for for years and, and no one was really using it. And, you know, we had a day where we were introduced. And as I said, um, I, you know, I, I hated CAD at school. Um, I hated it. And because you're, you're too young, it's so, it's so um, intimidating. There's so many options. And again, you're so young to know. And, um, you know, what, you know, 13 year old is going to be, you know, really invested in that. Um, but yeah, then I, I got into CAD and was like, oh, okay, there's a, I can see how this will help so much with manufacturing later down the road. So I was like, I need to get really good at this. So I just hit it hard. And um, yeah, and then we had this one day thing where they showed 3D printing and it just changed everything. I was like, wait, 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 wait hang on, slow down. As in, well, you, it, it can do anything as in, you know, and they're like, yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, <laughs> well, I'll get cracking on. Um, but yeah, so yeah, definitely it, it was in college. Um, and uh, yeah, as part of your question, when did I focus on um, uh, gender of design? Um, that was, yeah, that's a really good question in terms of, you know, as an engineer, you're introduced to CAD um, and a lot of software is built around, say, manufacturing methods, um, you know, and, you know, engineers were efficient people, you know, um, but basically there's a lot of straight edges. And the professor once told me that straight edges equal stress. And I've remembered that for, yeah, a long time. Um, and then, you know, went to uni and um, I was suddenly starting to see these forms that, you know, in CAD that I thought, I don't know how to make that. Like I've, I've, I can machine things and I can design something for milling, but then suddenly you've got all this curvature. How do you do that? And then suddenly it got into this weird area of kind of almost like sculpture. Um, so, and yeah, from there I was like, okay. And then I started to realize and hear about gender for design and I realized the efficiency of it and what you can get from it. And I was like, okay, I need to focus on this. So again, the applications are perfect for motorbike parts. So yeah, thank you for the question. <laughs> that is awesome. Okay, connected to that, uh, John asks, what software do you use for your generative design? Uh, I've got to thank, yeah, Autodesk Fusion 360. Um, incredible, such powerful software. Um, it's just amazing to have and as I was saying, that it's so powerful um, where we're at now. When I think of, you know, when I was introduced to CAD, you know, um, you know, in, in school, and it's like it was on like basically on like Windows ninety five or something, you know. Um, but Fusion three hundred and sixty, it it's such a good um, uh, piece of software that you can do multiple areas. So again, I can do parts for machining, or then I can say no, I want to focus on meshes. And again, the sculpture, and then I can go into my shape optimization. I can go into my FEA, which is all the stress analysis, and then I can go into general design. So yeah, they've, they've got a great package. I recommend, yeah, anyone interested in it, download it. I think you can try it out. So yeah, that's good stuff. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> okay, we got a question from Yvonne. Uh, our, our certified NASA astronaut, any need or ideas to make the parent design size adjustable? In terms of the uh, bracket, um, this, so as I said, it clamps around the fork. Um, and this is again, something that's kind of useful to have with 3D printing 
is that you can easily customize. Um, and again, for one-offs, like again, if this was milling, you know, or any traditional manufacturing method, if I wanted to make a quick change, um, that affects a massive batch because I'd have to do a massive batch production to make the cost per unit right. efficient for everyone. But, you know, 3D printing, it can easily tweak it and work on it. So uh, with this indicator bracket, there'll be a range of sizes that people can choose the exact size they want. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. Okay. Uh, let's... Do you want to pick one? You can see them, right? Yeah, yeah I can see them. All right, um, why, don't you, why don't you pick? Uh, okay, I like this one. Uh, They're all well, good, but yeah. Um, beautiful and functional design. Uh, have you always been inspired by biomimicry in particular? Um, or do you have other designs such as engineers you look uh, to for inspiration? Um, yeah, really good question. Um, biomimicry, and nature in general, sorry, this fly again. <laughs> Biomimicry is, is, I'd say, always interests me. Like, I love the outdoors and natural world and things. Um, and, um, you know, you see every now and then you see a case study where biomimicry is applied. Like, you think of a bullet train and they studied, um, uh, was it the Kingfisher and the aerodynamics of it? Because it has to change from two different mediums, from air to water. Mm -hmm. And they use that in their design. And then that you kind of realize like when I was younger someone told me about the when you think of what evolution is and it's basically trial and error to an extreme level um and so after millions of years this is a you know a damn good way of doing things um so yeah that that's when I kind of realized that oh yeah there's there's a lot to be learned um from biomimicry um what other designs and engineers um do you inspire from um there's a guy called um i pronounce his name wrong all the time i think his name's called Jana katanen or something he's a dutch um designer um where he he realized when he was at university that the um uh that with cad there's a lot of wireframes you can do and interesting builds and again with 3d printing um i recommend looking him up um He's also experimented a lot in 3D printing with these wireframes and forms that you can't make another way and then electroplating them. Um, and again, it's just, I think as, like, as an artist, you, you always have a massive respect for originality. Um, you know, so yeah, I have a lot of respect for that man. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. All right, you want to knock out the rest of these? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, what parts would you want to tackle with three printing core alpha um, yeah as i said the um uh, speedo brackets um uh this helmet peak i want to work on a headlight bracket um a lot of brackets basically um yeah and then for more like heavy duty applications you know we've got titanium printing things i can do some really structural stuff like i said with uh subframe exhaust brackets um that is another project i have done actually printed in stainless steel Still, an exhaust bracket I made for um, one of my bikes, and I love that's um, on my Instagram. But yeah, thank you. Um, John asks another one: Have you thought about using gender design for motorbike safety gear, e.g., buckling meshes for helmets? Yeah, that, that's actually a really good, um, really good point. You see, um, every now and then I see bicycle helmets where you see like a massive honeycomb structure um, underneath. Um, because it's not only lightweight, but you think it's it's a great structure for absorbing impacts. Um, for me, my thing isn't, um, uh, I don't want to say my thing isn't health and safety. It's not that, but as in, uh, you can imagine, you know, designing helmets. <laughs> There's a lot of testing um, and stages that has to go through um, to get that approved and then to go to market. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm more, um, I'd say my interest more like in the structures and maybe the artistic um, thing. You know, um, what the, mo the motto is at, at Burning Man is uh, safety third. Yeah, yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what one and two are, but uh, no, no. <laughs> it, seems, it seems maybe part of your, your, your motto yeah. um, uh, as well. Um, and let's see, you got... 
creating motorbike parts or have you ventured into other products as well? <laughs> Cheers, Ben. Um, yeah, appreciate that. Um, no, it's, again, like with, uh, you know, studying design and things and, you know, you just kind of, like they say, being a maker and wanting to make is like a disease because you're always working on a project and then there's always a next one. And, you know, it's, um, uh, you know, there's always something that you've got to be there. Um, and when you're learning, anyone interested in making design, I recommend you add as much as you possibly can to your arsenal. You've got to learn as much as possible and try new things out and see, you know, and, and specialize as well. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's my projects in the past have ranged, you know, from furniture to, um, uh, you know, just testing out and that again, that's, what's really interesting, you know, see how it kind of evolves bum bum. Um, yeah. And it's amazing to see this is where, um, I've got to. So, um, yeah, it's, it's amazing to see what, you know, what's that come to. So thank you, Ben. Awesome. Nikki asks uh, if they want to reach out. Oh, this is a great, this is a great uh, question to wrap up with. I think um, if they, people want to reach out to you and pick your brain, how can we connect? Uh, she loves your thinking. So where, where, where can everybody find you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cheers, Nikki. Um, yeah. Uh, Instagram um, is at evil components um, or um, the best way is probably send me an email um, evil components at gmail.com. Um, yeah, and uh, again, I love talking about anything to do with design and any questions you've got or ideas, you know, it'd be great to have a, I'm always up for a brainstorm. So, yeah. <laughs> so thank you. Awesome. Wow. It looks like the email, uh, this is uh, rapid fire. The email is already being drafted to, uh, <laughs> to go to you. Um, this is, this is so cool. So uh, Heath, I think we've we've got obviously a lot of work cut out for us to to get these parts for sale in in January, um, and and it's going to be really fun uh, working that out. I guess any other kind of uh, shout outs that you want to make or uh, requests that you have for the audience um, who are both here live and maybe those who'll be watching the replay. Um. Yeah, again, I just say thank you to you guys, um, Poly Spectra, um, well done to the finalists. Like, again, those applications are incredible, um, especially Ben with his that bionic arm that links is just that blows my mind. Um, yeah, I mean, he's such a pretty, young guy, pretty amazing. The, yeah, the, Tim. Really cool. I'd love to talk to him about that. Um, yeah, I want to give a shout out to uh, uh, a guy called Charlie. Uh, we have amazing brainstorms. Um, ben, one of my engineering buddies. Um, shout out to Jordan. Um, <laughs> he's uh, been working with me up here. Um, the, uh, incredible photographer. Um, Jordan Lee, look him up on Instagram. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, no, thank you again so much. But, like, it's, it's still, still sinking in. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, this has been amazing. Congratulations again, Heath. Uh, you know, may, maybe actually after this, we, we, we should, uh, we should hop on a quick, quick call and, uh, uh, discuss our, our next steps, uh, to, to get this, uh, get this out the door and, and on the marketplace and on to, to motorcycles everywhere. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you so much, everybody for joining. I just, again, want to, uh, you know, congratulate, uh, Heath, Evil Components. We'll make sure that in the replays, we've got all the links to social media, his website. We'll make sure that we follow up to let people know where they can actually buy these uh, parts uh, early next year. And uh, congratulations again to, to Trillium and to Ben Choi. Uh, we're super excited to uh, get the robot arm to throw a baseball. I have no idea if that's possible, but I, I really want to do that with Ben. And with, with, with Trillium, we were excited to go to the moon with you. Um, and then, yeah, again, just one more time, like it's been really fun. I like, this has not felt like work for me. And I just, that's 100% uh, credit to all the finalists um, and, you know, their hard work in submitting these ideas. And, and then I guess my last thank you is, is to Weevolver who um, has really been 
you know, uh, for this webinar, mostly behind the scenes, but obviously uh, for all of the communications and, and sharing the articles and sharing the stories and um, helping us spread the word and create this competition. We've always been super amazing partner in this and we're excited to, to continue to work with their community in the future. So yeah, with that, um, I think that we will um, we'll officially wrap it up and you know for all the finalists and runners up, let's let's be in touch uh, this week, you know, by email. Um, and yeah, uh, thanks again to everybody uh, for taking the time. It's been real fun and a great way to to end this year. So awesome. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thank you guys. <laughs> all right. Take care, everybody. <laughs> You too, Ray. Yeah. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye.